Welcome to the latest edition of the Bad A Team Bad Guys documentary. This week we go to season four, episode fourteen. Uh, the A Team is coming home. Uh, is coming. Uh, the A Team is coming, and we're delighted to be joined today by the one and only Daryl Anderson, who played the role of Burke, one of the arch uh, henchmen uh, in the episodes, one of the nemesis uh, to the A Team, who are trying to get a, a Russian uh, ballet dancer. Uh, trying to give her safe uh, passage uh, while the Russians were trying to bring her back, not to bestow her secrets, as they say, to the Americans as sort of such. And uh, Daryl, in terms of uh, the A-team, uh, 30, 35, 36 years ago now for yourself, in terms of you have had a long and illustrious sort of career, where does the A-team stand for you in terms of its nostalgia? Is it what are the, you were one of your cherished moments? Would it be in your top 20 of projects that you've worked on? I was very pleased to get the opportunity to do the A-Team. It, it was uh, about 180 degrees from the show that I was best known for back then. It was my calling card. I was in a series called Lou Grant. Okay. That was a, a newspaper series. And in five years, we never blew anything up. No one ever threw a fist. And there were, I think, two stunts involving vehicles, uh, one of which was done at a location I was not at. So getting to go into the A-Team, first of all, the director was David Hemmings, who starred in Antonioni's Blow Up and was also the star of a, uh, a British TV series, uh, Charlie Bubbles, which uh, okay. my father-in-law and I were both very fond of. And got to talk to David about that. Um, but, but in the main, this was a show that had a standing second unit, uh, led by a second unit director named Craig Baxley, who became a, a principal photography director in episodic television. He also became a second unit director in feature films, including Predator. Oh, wow. And so the, the, the second thing I, I checked when I got uh, the part was to look at the schedule and see if on any of the days that the second unit was shooting, I might be on hold. And there was such a day. So with uh, David Hemming's permission, I uh, offered to Craig Baxley to uh, come with him on the day of this shooting so that he could tie a principal actor into the footage if he wanted to. Hmm. And uh, he said, sure. So I, I spent a day with the second unit which, uh, you know, there's no accommodation for actors because there aren't any on those shoots. There's no dressing room, there's no makeup. And I just arranged to get my wardrobe, but I got to see the, the whole, uh, in the episode, there's an assault on a facility where there's a secret weapon stored and it's a big shootout, lots of people. And uh, it was just, uh, for me, it was like being in Toyland. You know, I, I hadn't done anything uh, like it before. And I suppose that uh, Daryl, one thing they say about the A team and speaking to many guests about it was the, the professional stuntsmen uh, that they had on the show at that time. They were probably the best in Hollywood, probably the best in America. There was no accidents. Uh, they went to so far to even every actor, they tried their best to get a mirror, mirror error. Mirror, mirror image of a, a copy of his double to play the stunts really that was so much of the detail they tried to get in terms and no actor was forced to do his own sort of stunts in terms of if it deemed it was so if it was any bit risky but in terms of perfection those stunt men uh, they were the real heroes as such of the 18. Yes and, and the stunt community includes precision drivers and those guys can do things with a car that uh is is just unbelievable and and they had some of the best drivers and i suppose uh daryl in terms of uh coming on the set of the a team uh, your first day what was uh, your experience did you meet any of the the main cast in terms of george repair Dirk benedict dwight schultz uh, mr t or had you worked with any of them previously the the only one i only met briefly in makeup was was uh papard the others i worked with um okay. and uh, and i think everybody who did the show would say that uh dirk and dwight were uh just a, a delight uh they're, they're just so creative and we're just having so much fun it was contagious mr t um 
he had a head cold while I was working and, and that didn't stop him from flying to Chicago on the weekend to see family. And then his head cold went into his ears and the doctor wouldn't let him get on a plane for 24 hours. So my episode got pushed to an extra day, which cost me another job. And that's okay. one thing I always remember about that. Mr. T's cold kept me from doing misfits of science. I don't remember anything about the misfits of science, except that I would have had a line of dialogue that said, that's it, give me the rabbit. And I really <laughs> wanted to do that. <laughs> and I suppose, uh, Daryl, you mentioned there, it was one of the first times that you ever played a sort of a, a henchman as such, a real sort of a bad guy in a sort of a TV sort of action series in terms of a DA team. Was it a sort of a, a novel sort of experience for you? Well, no, I had done heavies for the Candle Company. Uh, okay. I did some other shows, and I don't remember what order I did them okay. in, but I did uh, Riptide and Hardcastle and McCormick. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, that that wasn't uh, new. I didn't really get to handle a heavy-duty weapon until I did uh, Riptide. But um, another thing that that I always remember about this episode is that there was a we shot most of it in San Pedro, which is uh, about an hour and a half south of Los Angeles. And in San Pedro, there is a Korean friendship bell pagoda and park on a bluff overlooking the ocean. And we didn't shoot there, but we were parked there during shooting. And I spent quite a bit uh, of uh, part of a day waiting on that bluff with uh, Jack Ying and John Considine. Yeah. And John Considine, uh, it kind of completed a circle for me because when I was a boy uh, wanting to be an actor on television, the episode of The Twilight Zone that terrified me most was one that starred uh, uh, Mr. Considine, Mike Kellen, and Simon Oakland. And with okay. John Considine, I got to work with all three of them, which I, I just loved. And he was he a was great guy. And I suppose that, uh, Daryl, uh, in terms of the A-team, uh, when was, I suppose you've been in so many projects uh, throughout your career, uh, you, you've probably seen yourself on television so many times, so you saw of your family and loved ones, but do you remember where you were when your episode of the A-team aired on uh, TV or do mm -hmm. family or loved ones, or did you, what was the first time you actually remember seeing it uh, on TV? I, you know, all I really remember about most of, most of those jobs is being on the set and chatting with those people and meeting them. Mm. I had to watch the episode again to remember what it was about. Okay. And it took me a while to figure out why I didn't try to do an accent. And I remembered, oh, I asked them if they wanted that and they said no. Mm. And now that I watch it again, I, I'm sorry I asked them. <laughs> <laughs> And I suppose, uh, Daryl, uh, in terms of uh, Burke, uh, in terms of uh, the, the sort of the Russian sort of aspect in, in terms of the A-team, uh, you're probably a well-renowned sort of actor. You're going from job to job as such in terms of uh, projects as such. Do you have time in that busy schedule to re do a bit of research in terms of the, the character, look back on maybe previous sort of uh, Russian uh, bad guys or sort of such like that? Or is it just very much on the spot what what you read in front of you and then your own sort of vision in your own head, how you would like to portray him? That one came up real suddenly and it was definitely uh, the latter. There, there wasn't any time to, to do it. Now, it doesn't always happen in episodes. Uh, I did a uh, TJ Hooker playing a serial killer with a partner and uh, the other actor, Joel Polis and I had a book about serial killers and we were passing back and forth and reading it between shots and really, really trying to squeeze in uh, uh, research because we had some days off. A-Team was, uh, you're in it, you just go with it and, uh, and it was fun. Watching it again, I recognized one of the uh, locations, the location that was the Russian embassy yeah. was a, a mansion in Pasadena that was used a lot. I, I was back on that for uh, Spelling's Hollywood Wives, where it was just a, a rich person's uh, place. And I suppose, uh, Darrell, uh, in terms of the A-team, uh, it's uh, gone 
global. It's seen in so many countries all over the world, dubbed in sort of so many languages as such. And uh, it was a massive hit in the 80s and early 90s for NBC. You probably right. kept it on, on the map as such uh, when, it, when things looked uh, a downward. A team brought, uh, brought it back from its sort of knees and sort of such. Uh, so to be involved in a sort of a project like that where you know that you your your appearances have been seen by people in Argentina, Nigeria, South Africa, Mexico, uh, Slovakia, Slovenia, Bosnia, Israel, Cyprus, all these sort of countries. Does that sort of fill you with joy when you see uh, projects like that that have gone outside the United States and Canada and have really gone global that people from all different nationalities can see you and uh, hear you or, or, or unless maybe your voice is maybe a bit dubbed in sort of some countries but does it still give you that great sense of joy yeah i it's it's far beyond anything i thought about when i was starting out um i i just really enjoyed working for stephen cannell he was a, a wonderful man really creative and uh died way too soon and you know there was a there was a period there where he and Aaron Spelling together were probably between the two of them making two thirds of what was on the air. There was the days of three networks, so that, so there you know it wasn't uh, wide open like it is today, and uh, and uh, we we lost them both in a fairly short period of time. Of course, Cannell first just stepped back from pro producing television and said, "I'm going to write novels now." And he'd grown up dyslexic, so that was it was important to him to do it. And I have his first novel, read it. Um, but he was just um, a wonderful guy, and uh, and the casting director for for the shows that I did, he had a whole casting department. But Victoria Burroughs cast all three of the Cannell shows that I did, and she is still around. Uh, she's. Uh, casting Peter Jackson's movies these days, but she's also a very active uh, in uh, animal rescue dogs. Okay. Yeah, Star Paws, that's uh, the casting director of uh, the A-Team. And I suppose, uh, Daryl, lastly, before I let you go, uh, in terms of uh, your episode of the A-Team, uh, season four, uh, episode 14, the A-Team is coming, the A-Team is coming. Uh, if, if someone put uh, an encyclopedia together of the A-Team and in terms of characters uh, that have appeared, fictional characters that have appeared in the A-Team throughout the five seasons, and they came to your character, Burka, and they left two blank sentences underneath, and they were looking around for trying to find something to say about him. And they got onto your talent agent to push, push, put them in touch with yourself and uh, during the phone call. And they asked you, uh, Daryl Anderson, having played Burka, uh, we're doing this encyclopedia. We would like two sentences to describe him. You portrayed him, uh, portrayed the character. What would you like those two sentences to read? Sleeper agent obviously was in the United States a long time and passing himself off as an American very well, but uh, secretly uh, very adept at bombs and uh, weapons. Uh, on that note, Daryl Anderson, a pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of your time in the A-Team playing Burka in season four, episode 14. The A-Team is coming. The A-Team is uh, coming. Uh, real delight sharing your memories of your time working with George and Dirk and Dwight and uh, your many projects with Stephen Cannell. We wish you a prosperous uh, 2021 and uh, hopefully uh, it's a uh, a year where uh, the latter end of the year where there's lots of opportunities for you and uh, your loved ones. But for the moment, Daryl Anderson, take care. Stay safe, Jim. Thank you. Take care.